Now we're going to be looking at algorithms. Now I know that sounds complex, but let's take it step by step. We are going to be looking at searching algorithms first, and we're going to start with the linear search. And all linear search means is that it's going to go through a data set and look for something in that data set, and it'll go one by one. Okay. So if we take a look at this Python list in front of us, we have a data set of just random numbers. If we wanted to find, say, number six, okay, using the linear search method, we will start at the beginning and go one by one until we find six. Now, this works for lists that are not sorted, okay? So if you have an unsorted list and you need to find something, you have to go one by one because you can't make any logical decisions about it. You have to start in the beginning to check number six exists here, here, because it can exist anywhere in the list. So let's see how this is done in code. So let's start writing our program. What we can do first is declare some variables. The first one will be find. Okay. So find is the value we are looking for. So in this case, we're going to look for six. And we can put that as an input. User can, you know, type it in. But we're just going to hard code it to six for now to make things easier. Next, we're going to call or declare found and set it to false. And found is going to keep track of whether we found six or not. Okay. Now, we are going to do a for loop. If you remember from our previous videos in Python, this will loop through each value in the list. So we can say for number in numbers. Okay, so for number, which is the value in numbers, which is the list. And we can say if uh, number is equal equal to find. Okay, and if it is equal, so if if it finds six, right, we can say found is equal to true because we found the value. And then we can just print something here to the uh, output or the command line. And if we can say found at position, okay, now this is interesting because we can't actually access the index. Remember, lists have values, but they also have an index starting at zero, okay? So it'll be zero, one, two, three for each uh, index. So we are going to create a counter variable and we're going to start it at one. Okay. You can start at whatever you like and we're going to put it here. Okay. Counter. Right. Now we're going to have an else and we're going to say counter is equal to counter plus one. Okay because we want to increment this counter every time because we will have it as one. When the loop runs again, it'll be two. Okay. Now, finally, you can have an if statement and we can check if not found. So if we didn't find anything in our list, we can then print something to the user and say item not found. Okay. So what do you think is going to happen here when we run this code? Right, found at position seven. Let me make that a little bit larger. Okay, so found at position seven. So that's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. But because of our counter, we're saying we found it found it at position seven. You can have it whatever you want. But what we've done here is completed a linear search. What happens is that we went through each uh, one of these, the counter kind of proves that and we find six and then we print it to the terminal. Right. So that is linear search, but you can see it might have some limitations. What if our list had a hundred or a thousand different items in it? This code will have to loop through each single item before it finds whatever it's looking for. Okay. That's where binary search comes into play. And we can talk about that in a second. But before we do, I just wanted to show you that we could do the same thing, but with text. Okay, so imagine we had, just make this shorter actually. Imagine we had a list of people, okay? And we can just get rid of that and people, and we can just make this for person in people and person. Okay, so we can say person, not found. And we can look for Michael. And this will have to be a string. Now if we run this, found a position two. 
one, uh, zero, one, or because of our counter, one, two. Okay, so it can work for text and numbers, but remember this method should only be used for unordered lists, okay, because it's not really efficient. Now let's look at binary search to see what something more efficient could look like. So I hope you paused the video and you've taken some time to fully understand linear search. Now let's take a look at binary search. Now binary search is different to linear search and it is more efficient, but can only be applied to sorted or ordered lists. In front of us, we have an ordered list called numbers, starting with the number 23 and ending at 31. Now say we wanted to search for the number 29. With a linear search, we would have to loop through the list and go one by one by one until we get to 29. Now imagine if our list was a million items big, okay? We'll have to, and we wanted to find the second last item in that list. We'll have to loop through almost a million times before we find that last item. Now with binary search, we can make this more efficient by saying, finding the middle point. Okay, let's find the middle point of this list. In this case, it's 27. You can see there's four items on either side of 27. And we will say, okay, what number are we searching for? 29. Is 29 greater than, less than, or equal to 27? In this case, it is greater than. So we can focus now on this part of the list. And everything else gets discarded. Okay. We then say, okay, let's find a new middle point. In this case, we don't really have a defined middle point. So we'll either round up or down. In our case, we'll round down and it'll be 29. And we'll say, okay is this new middle point greater than, less than, or equal to 29? In our case, it is 29, so great, we found our number. So that is how it works in theory. Let's see how it looks in code. We're going to start very similar to our previous algorithm. We're going to say 29 for the find variable. We're going to set found to false so we can track, okay? Something new here, we're going to have a start index. That's going to be equal to zero. And we're going to have an end index, which is equal to the length of our list minus one. Okay. So why start index and end index? So if you remember, we want to identify the middle point. And if our values, let's say 29, was greater than, equal to, or less than, we need to then only focus on this part. So that means we will. We don't want to deal with all of this. So instead of starting from the beginning and finding a midpoint, we need to start from here and end here to find the new midpoint. Okay. So that's why we have a start index and our end index. We're using length, which is a built in, built in function in Python, and it will bring back zero. It'll, in fact, it'll count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, but we want to work with indexes. So remember, it starts at zero, so we just need to minus one from there. Right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to uh, loop through our code. So we're going to use a while loop and we're going to say while start index is less than equal to end index, do whatever you need to do. Because start index is zero, end index would be, uh, what is it, eight, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So and make sure we don't loop too much. So what we're going to do next, we are going to find that middle point. So we're going to say midpoint is equal to end index plus start index divided by two. Now let's take the step by step here. We've used two fold slashes for division this time. All that does is it rounds down to make sure we have a whole number. Okay because we want a whole number when we're doing some referencing later on. And why do we do index plus start index? Because we need to know, so zero, and then eight, and divide by two is four, so zero, one, two, three, four, so we found our middle point. And this will keep changing, you'll see later on in the code, okay? So we've got our middle point. Now we need to do our check, our first check, and say if numbers midpoint. So we're using that index to reference the number 27. 
okay? And say, if it's equal to find, then we're going to say found at midpoint. Remember midpoint, we can use that index and just say we found the number we're looking for at that midpoint. Cool. Next, we're going to say found equal to true. Because remember, this is going to track for us. And finally, we're going to break. Now, break is a keyword in Python that allows us to come out of the loop. Because if we found this value, say, for example, you're looking for 27, but we found it, great. We don't then need to do any other logic to break the list into left and right and small and small because we found it. We can just break out instantly. And at the bottom, we can say, if not found, print not found. Okay, cool. First out the next bit. The next bit's important. We're going to say if numbers midpoint, okay, is greater than find, then an index is equal to midpoint minus one. And if you just follow me a little bit further, we're going to do start index equal to midpoint plus one. So why are we doing this? We are doing this so we can determine our new range to look at in our sequence. And we can say, cool, if we didn't find that number at the middle point, then we need to uh, move the start and end so we can determine the next middle point. So we will say if numbers midpoint, so in this case, we would be on 27. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if 27 is greater than find, then we like, okay, cool. It's going to be in this half. So then we say n index equals midpoint minus one. So we'll know that we can discard all of this and our new uh, end will be 26, okay? And if it is less, so if our 27 is less than the value we're looking for, then we discard all of this and start here. So that's all this is doing. Okay, so now let's run this code. Found at six. Cool. So you can see that. Remember, this is the index. So we said 29 is found at six. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's it. That's how uh, it might be complex to look at, but if you do it a few times, you'll understand what's happening here. So the code, right, has taken what we said, and this is what it looks like. It says, okay, what's the middle point of our list? 27. Is the value we're searching for greater than, equal to, or less than that middle point? Oh, it's greater than? So that means we need to focus on this part of the list. Let's find our new middle point. And you know, with our floor division here, it'll go to 29. And is 29 equal to the number we're searching for? Yes. So show us found at. So that is binary search. I hope you guys understand both binary and linear. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments below. I will be taking a look at it. Thanks for watching, guys.